So, Bri, it's all about coronavirus today, right? Oh, yeah. What do you think? We're on one of our favorite still waters, yeah. Stony Lake, yeah. Douglas Lake Ranch. Beautiful, flat, calm morning. A little foggy drive coming up this morning. <laughs> yeah, muddy, a, muddy and foggy. <laughs> muddy and foggy. I've never had the boat so muddy. You had to do, we were looking for a coin operated car <laughs> wash up here. <laughs> but we're, we're on the water and uh, it's, well, it's June 1. Yeah. And there's bomber shucks and there's baby shucks. So we'll put the sounder down and, uh, you know, obviously we're looking for the big guys to come off today. Yeah. But hopefully we'll, We'll get them on the indicator and then we'll do our favorite deep lining. So it's hopefully it's all about chronomids today. As we take you sport fishing on the fly. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First, Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy, rods and reels. Right, so you're looking at your depth sounder there. Yeah, we got the hummingbird set up here, uh, not only to find the depth, but we're looking in slightly deeper water now. Usually the bombers, the big chronomids, come off in deeper water on this lake, so we're just sounding out in the 17 to 25 foot depth range to see if we can mark any fish in a, under the boat. And if we mark fish under the boat, like two or three in a very small area, then it's a pretty safe bet to say they're just there's a bunch of fish down there and we could set up over them. So I haven't seen anything yet, uh, but again, it's early in the morning and uh, you know, usually these hatches start going around 10, 10.30 oh, okay. and build right through the early afternoon and start to thin out by late afternoon. Sweet, so again, depth sounders, critical tool. Oh yeah. Critical yeah. tool to find the depth and to see what's happening. Absolutely. What a beautiful day, look at it, gorgeous. So Don, it's great you caught first fish. Yeah. And it's uh, not a monster, but it was, you know, 14, 15 inches big enough to do a throw pump. And as, it was, we, as we mentioned, it's early in the morning and it's often what you'll see in the first fish you catch, first few fish is a, a bunch of live Daphnia, zooplankton. Okay. And then this guy had one large bomber in him. <laughs> one just <big> one. <laughs> but that's typically how it starts in the morning. Yeah. They're still grazing on a zooplankton. They're waiting for the chronomids to start emerging, pupating up yeah. to the surface of the water. So it's a good sign. You know, we know there's going to be some bombers coming off today. Yeah. Uh, but all that zooplankton, they're all alive. So the fish is, it means the fish is actively feeding, which is good as well. Yeah, and I started with a little 16 2X long, my normal. Yeah. Well, my blue done with the right river away. right away. So that's good, it's a good yep. sign. It's all good. Right on. <laughs> what are you thinking, Brian? Oh, well, we just saw a summer duck adult. Yeah. So a, quite a dark burnt orange body. So I picked out a summer duck pupa. So we've seen light olive bomber yeah. adults and summer duck adults. So um, we got to keep trying. Okay. And it's early. They'll start. The you hatchet are. really isn't really going yet, but it better go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that box. All those giddies in there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Another one, Bri. Yeah, you like that's your third or fourth fish. Yeah. So, what do you? What pattern you got on, Don? So there it is. One of my favorites. It's the it's the blue done, blue done body, with the red and black rib, with the black nickel bead, uh, size 16, 2x long. Be my best fly all year. I don't know why, but it seems to match the majority of chronomids. Even need, though right now yeah. nothing's hatching, is it? Yeah. Bri? Well, I'll do a throw pump on this guy. Just oh yeah. Just okay. just to check. Yeah, it's and, just a uh, nice we'll fish. See, but, yeah, I mean, that, fly, that flight's been working that's, great. That's four in a row within uh, 10 minutes, so it's been steady. Okay. Let's find out why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's your throat sample, Don. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, and one, one medium-sized bomber, but just like the first fish we did. Yeah. So, yet the reading, you're, you're uh, blue done. Yeah. Uh, but all those old plankton are alive. Uh, and they're just so one pupa in there. So I'm thinking they've seen it, right? They've probably seen that pupa that I'm using for the past few days, maybe? Yeah, what well, you, think? you know, typically the smaller guys come off first yeah. and they've eaten a lot of them. So, so they're eating it. <laughs> I don't know, it's they're good. They're going back to their creature comfort foods. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep it on for oh, a yeah. time. What the heck? Well, I'm going to switch to a smaller pattern okay. and, and try some different Yeah, mine's 16. 16 2X. 16 2X. Seems yep. to be the ticket. That's it. Go to size. Nice. So thinking we should move a bit. Try a little deeper. Yeah, well, I keep seeing fish moving out in deeper water. And the shucks are blowing towards us. You know, it's pretty light. Whatever's coming off is not very heavy. And plus there's no swallows out. So it can't no. be, it, it, it can't be uh, that heavy of a hatch. No, and I only got a few there. I got four, and then it just stopped. Then it yeah, was quiet. It, it, it shut down. So yeah. I think it's worth going out into like 24, 26. Yeah. Just sit there for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, try it. And if not, then we can go back in. Well, um, it's nice, because then I can use my other technique. I can drop a full sink straight down. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. <laughs> you got the little guy out there now, a little fish finder, the fishing buddy. Okay, so we moved to a new spot. I just hooked the little guy again, so Brian yeah. throat sampled. So this just shows you the value of doing a throat pump. We're fishing small patterns, because that's what you've been getting your, your fish yeah. on this morning, and all these guys are bombers. But there's, they're not coming off. I'm not seeing any sitting on the surface. I'm not seeing any fresh yeah, shocks, shocks. But they're obviously eating them. So they're sitting down there. They're sitting down there staging. Uh -huh. Those people are staging head up, tail down just wiggling the bottom, but he fish bit a smaller fat. Yeah, I had a 14, 14 2X. Yeah, Those are, are like, what, 12 they're, 10s? They're 12 2X. Wow. You know, a, a dark brown in color and then a very watery green, yeah. almost a bit of yellow in it. And that's the two colors that we've seen of adults. Yeah. So they're on them in this deep water. Okay. That's good. Let's get some more. Okay. <laughs> well, we finally got a fish to film, Brian. <laughs> I mean, we could have filmed the other one, oh. but this one felt better. Oh yeah, that's a nicer fish. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. A nice fish. yeah. You know what? It pays to move. Like we, you were catching fish in the shallow water. We saw fish rising in yeah. deeper water. We come out, and we saw right away a fish under the boat in 25 feet of water. And we've seen. <laughs> oh, oh, he came off. Oh, he oh. came off. That was a nice fish too. But we've seen yeah. two and three under the boat. So if we see that many on that little sounder in 25 feet of water, we've only, we're only scoping an area right. that that big. There's a bunch of fish out here. And we've already hooked three or four smaller ones. Oh yeah. And but that was nice. Yeah, we're getting, but we're losing them. Yeah, too. So they're not really <laughs> aggressive yet. But yeah. This you is wait. The great, this is great. I know. <laughs> Gotta love deep mining and I'm going to get one I mean, of those rod holders soon. We're 25. We could get them on an indicator. Yeah. But it's a lot. And then they got a cast. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's way more fun. <laughs> uh, I, I stuck with the big guy. I got the, the big guy ate it. Yeah, the big guy ate it. Oh, whoa. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I just landed a couple little guys. We both did. And we we're wondering where are all the big guys. Well, nice. we've been getting these love taps, a little yeah. bump, bump. They're like they're, they're just. <laughs> Nosing it and then lead, taking off, and yeah. I like the, the little love. We had tap. to get get oh, a bigger a nice guy here. Oh yeah, 
And gee, just like it always is this spring, the rain has begun. Hey, Brian, we're always in rain this yeah. spring. Crazy. That's a better fish. Yeah, that's nice and solid. Oh, yeah. You know, it's great using a soft rod when you're, when you're deep lining, because, oh! Oh, no! <laughs> because they, him. uh, you could fight them better. Yeah. And he still <laughs> lost them. <laughs> and he still <laughs> lost them. Oh, that that's was too a, bad. That, that was a nice fish. Yeah, that was a nice solid fish. So what'd uh, you put on? You put on the big guy, didn't you? I put on a big red butt. Red butt bomber. You know, a pretty big oh, guy. Yeah, pretty big. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's like size what? That's a uh, 12 2 x. 12 2 x. Yeah. So yeah. pretty big. I got a 14 on right now. Yeah. But we're getting bumps. But that was the first big fish. Yeah, it was. Actually, the first fish we filmed. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were getting fish and yeah. just haven't been. Wow. That big yet, exactly. but that was that was filmable. That was filmable. <laughs> That's good. And this rain now, we'll hope, hopefully it'll stop. Well, we got a little rain shower coming through. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Boy, he hit hard too. I thought he was bigger than that when he hit. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, we've had him a lot bigger than yeah. that. Yeah. But... Well, it's still nice, nice chromey. Fish are in great past, shape. Yeah, in the past too, we had nice, uh, you know, nice bombers in them. There's so the they are starting. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. There we go. There he goes. Nice. Well, I think we're going to get our ring gear on done. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, for the, looks like a short sprinkle, but still a sprinkle. Well. That's a the, better one, Don. That's better. Went with a little, we just had the rain shower. We had to hunker <laughs> down for a bit. But this guy hit it pretty hard. And you know what's funny? Because he was just tapping it again. Yeah. So yeah. ideal setups, you know, when we're fishing deep line, I like a real soft rod. So this is one that uh, Taylor Culver made me. It was actually custom made for sport fishing on the fly. Real nice soft blank. You know, it's a five, six weight. And it's a 10 footer and it's just perfect. Oh, good. He's wound up. So, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is yeah. there. That's a nice fish. And you know, that's why I really like a soft rod. Soft rod makes it really good. Well, you won't break fish off with that rod. No, no, it's really nice and soft. It flies out. I'll just hold this guy up for everybody. To the real big boys yet, but you know, nice fish. Yep. Nice beauty cool fish. Sorry, Don. You need rod holders if you're going to put your rod down. No kidding. When you're doing that rod. <laughs> would have been gone. Would have been long gone. <laughs> he smoked it. Another chrome bullet. Looks quite nice. And the, the other trick is crank your drag down. Yeah. Because when they hit, they set the hook them. They hook themselves. Yeah, and they're in the air within two seconds. Yeah. Which is shocking. You know, we're down 24 feet. <laughs> And then they're up in the air within, uh, in no time. Oh, that's a gorgeous fish. And spinning down there. Oh, yeah. Look at the beautiful colors on that oh, fish, yeah. Bry. Oh, he's all It's all lined up. Oh, nice. Beautiful panana. Oh, yeah. Beautiful colors. Look at that. I love the chrome colors. Yep. There it is. Okay, better fish. And you still got your red butt. Big I red butt. I still got the old red butt. The big red butt. The big red butt. <laughs> it's a winner. I know. Well, we should probably throat sample another yeah. fish. We haven't done it for a while just to see. Because we're starting to get more consistent bites yeah. now. It's like every time we put the rod. I know. But <laughs> so, small, a lot of small ones. But now we need some big boys. Yeah. And then they might really be hatching. But you know what we're also seeing? Mayfly done yeah. drifting by. Drifting so, by. <laughs> that's, it's a crazy oh. day. Oh, you got oh, a fish, got a on, fish on. on. Oh, darn it. Oh, gee. So give me a rod. Oh, okay. Here, take the rod. Oh, gee. That was just, that's why I had it hanging. I had my rod hanging there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? We're lucky that thing didn't go over. No kidding. Well, only because it's a small fish. So it's a little guy. Yeah, a little guy. There's a lot of fish around right now because we're seeing two and three fish go by under the boat. So we know there's uh And I was standing on my line so it wouldn't <laughs> <There's>... go. <laughs> Little guy. 
That's kind of the ones we haven't been filming. Little boys, yeah, a little shake and bake. There he goes. There he goes. And then he's off. There. That's the beauty of those uh, Moby nets, right? Oh, you yeah. Just give that him a little shake. That rubber mesh, it just. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for landing my fish, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, dog. <laughs> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First, Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy, rods and reels. Oh, we got another one, Don. <laughs> yeah. We're getting them another, steady, Bry. Another decent one. Oh, they're strong. Oh, what I've noticed this spring on all the lakes we've been fishing, because of the cool water temperatures, because it's been such an ugly wet spring and cold, the fish pull like yeah. even the small ones. Because of the cold water. It's just right? the water so cool this year. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. six degrees at least below normal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a nice fish. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quick throw pump of this okay. fish and see what uh, whether he's got uh, some fresh bombers in him right okay. now. Turn them upside down, keep in the water. Get all the water out of the pub. Slide the pump in. Depress it. Back it out. Nice. And then we can let them go. Beautiful fish. All right, so we'll see what he's got. So we got our little vial here. Oh, there, oh. Oh, oh, now this is really interesting, Don. Okay. We, this is a great opportunity to talk about the life cycle of the chronids, because in this sample, we've got a live bloodworm, the chronid larva, and we've got live pupa. So, chronids have a complete life cycle, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. And 99% of the feeding in our lakes is on the, either the larva, but more importantly, on the pupa. And uh, most chronomids have a one year life cycle. So that little red larva is living in the bottom of the lake. We're in 26 feet of water and he's living in a tube in the mud. And he sticks his head out and he feeds on decomposing plant matter. And uh, they stay and they live in that tube. So for a trout to have a chronomid larva or bloodworm in its throat means that trout came, saw the the larva sticking its head out in the tube, put his mouth, nose right up to him, flared its gills, and uh, sucked that yeah. uh, larva mm -hmm. into its throat. And so these pupa are at, at the bottom of the lake as well. So larva, one year life cycle, spends, the chronomid spends a year in the larval stage, and then transforms for, from the larval stage to the pupa stage inside that tube at the bottom of the lake in 5, 25, 55, 90 feet yeah, of water. 90, yeah. And uh, 10 to 14 days later, the transformation is complete from the larva to the pupa. The pupa breaks out of the old larval tube, uh, traps gas under its skin, its, its cuticle, and uh, elevates to the surface of the lake to hatch. Hatches into the adult. The adult uh, females have uh, fertilized eggs within 24 hours. They come back to lay the eggs, and the cycle started over again. Wow! How long do the adults live for? About a couple of days. Well, that's it. They don't. Okay. They don't feed. They don't have any feeding mouth Nothing. parts. Wow! So there you go. The complete life cycle. Unreal. And it's great. We got the larva cool. in there as well as the pupa. Right on. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Gee, mine went down hard. Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh no! Am I, am I Whose here? fish is that? Oh, yours! Oh. Yours! Mine's over here. You're gonna. <laughs> He's off, I think. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> here, I'm gonna hand you this. I don't know where he's gone. If he's gone under the back anchor rope or, or what? Oh. Yeah, he might have. Oh no, he didn't. Oh. Okay, you can you can bring my guy in again, Bry. Bring in my fish. Oh. oh, shoot! That is just crazy when they hit like that. My rod was going straight down. <laughs> I saw him coming up, and I'm going, oh, look! I mean, he 
Oh, that no. guy, this was a big fish. Look what he did to the rod. I, I had that thing cranked down. I know. And he pulled it right down. <laughs> oh, crazy. Your guy jumped in the boat. <laughs> nice That's fish. That's a nice bro. fish, Don. Yeah. Oh, the. Beautiful fish. Oh, he just. Yeah, he's nice and fat. He's not tired though. Oh yeah. Healthy fish. Where the... Tangled up. Oh, there it is. There it is. So we're gonna, you know, we've, we've caught a lot of fish today. <laughs> so i gonna let this guy go. And uh, there you go. I'm gonna just talk about the setup. So. So I'm gonna, so where did, you know, we got our type seven full sinking line and the, we, we don't want a, our leader to be too long. So my total length of my leader is less than four feet. So I've got a nail knotted, a piece of 10 pound and about uh, 16 inches to a swivel there. Okay. And then from the swivel, about 18 feet, inches yeah. of fluorocarbon 4x to my uh to your fly my gray chironomid pupa cool and you don't use a slip weight above the above the swivel you don't put any weight above that yeah so we yeah, just you swivel. know you want this okay. i'm using the swivel yeah a big one so okay. it adds it's like yeah. a sinker but it also uh uh you know you want some weight down there to keep your fly you don't want your fly to be bouncing up too much, into, right. and you can like like your setup. You've got a little, a little piece of sliding yeah. uh, lead on there, a sinker. So that's that's the setup. But the critical thing for this setup is knowing the depth you're fishing. And right. so they use these little clip-on sinkers that you can get at fly shops or tackle stores. And this is this is our depth locator. So I <laughs> clip it onto the fly. I lower it over the side. You know, my, our sounder's telling us we're in 36 feet, but we need to know exactly where our fly is. So I'm, I'm letting the line out to the bottom. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> You're not all tangled. Tangled up from that fish. <laughs> so then I'm letting, letting out line till I hit the bottom. So you hit bottom, so now it's so static. I'm, there's the bottom okay. right where my rod yeah. tips in the water. Right. And I'm just gonna pull in that much line about a foot about or two 16 feet 16 inches okay and that's it so i know i'm 16 inches off the bottom and then i just strip my line in get to this the sinker unclip it throw the line and the fly back in the water and then just cast it out and no let worries. her sink straight up and down you're going to hold the rod <laughs> Put it in the rod holder. <laughs> Nothing in between. That's it. <laughs> so we have various options right now. So of course we got the, the rod holders. These Scotty rod holders. Oh, gee, are excellent. Oh, I just had one. But what Uncle Teddy taught us, Ted McDonald, a good friend. You know, he said always be in tune with your fly. Right? He always likes to give it a little motion, just to keep it down there. Of course, me and Brian, taking the easier route. A great way to do it is you put in these rod holders. They're going to hold for you. And every once in a while, you just Give the boat, just give the boat a little rock, especially in calm weather like this, and you just wait and see. Normally, when they're deep line crowd emitting, they hammer that. They come by that fly, they take it. Two seconds later, they're in the air. It is spectacular. So if you want to just relax and catch fish, deep line crowd emitting is the way to go. And if you don't want to relax, you can still deep line, but just hold on to your rod and just give a little motion. All I do is I've got a, a small slip weight on there and I just give it a little motion. As soon as I feel tightening of that rod, if they're not gonna really crush it, then I know I've got a fish on. And you tend to get more when you're holding onto the rod, but ah, we're getting so many fish today, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Getting a, getting a little bit bigger. Still, we got a lot of smaller fish today. And we expect to get some real big fish in here. Nice thing is, even these fish this size, they tug hard. And you know what else I like, Bry? 
with the deep lining, I don't have to worry about my indicator popping or nothing, right? <laughs> I just reel it up That's and I'm right. good. Um, oh yeah, see, this are our standard size, nothing. Oh, gee, oh, I know it might have been yours. <laughs> but the standard size, but you know, beautiful fish, still gorgeous. Oh, flies out. Just, just hold him up real quick, he's still hot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, come on. Come on. No, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's just too hot. There he is. There he is there. Gorgeous fish. There he goes. Nice. Nice. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy Rods and Reels. Oh, I got to admit, I would have never got this fish if I wasn't holding the rod, Don. No, because he just plucked he at just, it. He just, eh? oh, whoa. That's a nice healthy fish, yeah. right? It's a nice, oh. oh. Oh, no, that was finally one of our bigger guys. We're losing a big <laughs> fish. Oh, that was a nice fish. That was a nice oh. fish. We saw him here a couple of times. <laughs> oh, well. They're hot. They're crazy I when you know. hook them on the deep in deep water. They're just <laughs> that's so much fun. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, let's keep it going. Gee whiz. Oh. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Coming right at you. Yeah. Whoa. Hey, now we're starting to get a bigger oh. fish, right? Oh, oh, crazy fish! Crazy. <laughs> yeah, these fish are—they're—they're they're in excellent shape. Are they ever? They're just nice and solid. Solid oh, crones right now. It's a beautiful mm. fish. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, look at the colors. That's gorgeous. Oh, well condition. Okay, well they're getting a little fatter, a little bigger. <laughs> We're getting there. Get that. We're getting there. Oh yeah. A little fatter, a little bigger. Yeah, a little bigger. I mean, we've got to keep moving. <laughs> yeah, that's Just... it. We're in the hog line. We should get a big one here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were just retreat. You just started to inside I, up a bit. I grabbed it out of the rod holder, gave it one little tweak, and wham! Boy, this better fish too. Oh. Boy, there he is there, digging, digging. Let's hold him up. Oh yeah, that's a nice, oh, nice, a nice fish, Don. Nice fish. I mean, look at the, look at the colors. Just gorgeous fish. And there he goes. You're playing it like a little baby fish. Yeah, we're just playing like <laughs> these little guys have been playing. But I think this is, oh yeah, this is a bigger, better fish. Better fish. Oh, we've been catching so many fish, I but know. they're, we can't seem to find a good, uh, big boys, bigger fish today. Well, you know, like you say, sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off. You never know. Well, that's yeah, a nice they, fish. That's you know, quality. I think, you know, they might've fed heavy yesterday and they're, they're, very, very, you know, we'll get half a dozen to a dozen pupa in them. Half of them are fresh, half of them are old. Yeah. And uh, every sample has got half a dozen glass worms, cabras larvae in them too. So, you know, that's not a great <laughs> I didn't like your sign. face on that one. <laughs> well, still quality fish. Oh, he wanted it. He ate it. Yeah, he ate it. There he is. There, there he is. Yeah. There. Nice fish. There it goes. Oh, oh, there he is. And I got one on. Oh, a oh, oh, <laughs> little guy. Oh, come on. It's not even worth it. Get off. Oh. Poor little guys. Come on. The trouble He's is, still you longer. don't know. I know. You don't know until know. you pick the rod up. Uh, a new spot with the big bombers, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been moving lots, you know. We, we definitely, both of us firmly believe, got to keep moving if we can't find the fish size we're looking for. Yeah. 
And I think you got us right under the power line there into this deep hole. And bam, you just let, landed a nice one and this guy hit. This is a nice fish. That looks like one of those Campbell. Oh yeah. Campbell Lake ones. Oh yeah, look at that. Go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's better. That's getting bigger. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh. There he goes, okay. Hey, you well, might have both, found the spot. Yeah, we both hit fish exactly at the same, same time. time. So, and they were both better fish. And we're down about, we're fishing 36 feet. Yeah, perfect. Eee, like it, <laughs> big flies. Whoa. Oh, that's good. That's fish, better. Bro. Oh man, I love it. You know, I've got that size eight <laughs> cro crowd mix. So, you know, we're gonna do go to the bench. I've got a couple that I, an option to tie. I've got that beautiful little 16 2X that we were getting them on earlier. And I've got this bomber. And I think I tied a bomber last time, so let's go to the bench and I'll, I'll pick out a fly that I'm gonna tie. Today on the bench, I wanna tie you up Don's Bronze Bomber Chronomid. Sometimes you need a little, slightly bigger chronomid. Normally we size, you know, tie them in a size 18, 16. This one's an actually 14 2X long, so quite big. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 14 2X long curved. We'll use some 6 aught gray thread to tie with, some white antrum for the gills, a 7 64th inch magic brown bead for the bead, some 6 aught gray thread for the body, some 0.5 millimeter bronze window tent for the first rib, some fine red wire for the second rib, and some 6 aught rust thread for the thorax. So to start the fly off, I put the bead on the hook with the wide side, the wide diameter towards the eyelet because we are gonna tie in some, some gills on the fly. I like to use white antron, so I'm gonna start with my thread, just get a base layer of thread on there and cut it off. Take some white antron, take a few turns and tie that in right behind the eyelet for the gills. Cut off your excess and just do a whip finish there before you put your bead over it. So we'll whip finish there, cut off our thread, and bring our bead over. And we'll cut the gills to length a little bit later. Next, we're gonna take our 6 aught gray thread, and I love this color too. I love the blue done and the grays are great for body colors, for carotamids. Tie that in. And we're going to take our red wire, and I like to take the red wire and tie it in now, and just have the red wire go along the whole side of the hook. I'm just taking a wrap all the way down, and this red wire will be one of our ribs a little bit later. So tie that right back to the bend in the hook, and stop there. Now we've got the uh, different window tint colors. We've got the uh, you know the blue. We've got the gray, we've got this bronze window tent. This bronze window tent is awesome material for ribbing and creating bodies. So we're just gonna take a few wraps to tie it in at the back and just keep it thin at the back. I mean, it is a bomber. It's gonna be a little bit bigger fly. And bring it up. And again, you're just creating a body on the fly and you just wanna taper it slightly. Again, if you want it thinner, just give your Bob in a few spins just to lay that thread down a little flatter as you go. And just build up the body a little bit. It is a bigger fly, so again, you can, uh, can be quite tapered towards the top. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just slightly tapered towards the, the bead and finish there. What I like to do is actually tie in my window tint first. So I'm going to Take the ribbing and again do like six to seven. There's there's three there, four, five, yeah, you know, six is perfect for this one. And one went right into the top. And finish up behind the bead. Take a couple of wraps, tie in your material, and then cut it off. Next up will be to take our our red wire that we've had off the back. And then again, just, I like taking one wrap at the tail and then coming over top. And try to stay just in front of that bronze window tent you just put in. I just stay as close as I can to it without covering it 
and just stay in front. This will give us really two distinct ribs, a bright rib and a duller rib, both kind of bronzy and red, which goes great with this bead color. I love using the bronze window tint when I'm using the Magic Brown beads, which is one of my favorites. And again, just windmill, windmill your uh, wire to get it off, and it just pulls off seamlessly. What we're gonna do now is just whip finish, just a couple quick whips to tie off our, our gray thread. That gets rid of the gray thread. We've still got the gills. And now just to finish off too at the head, I like to put in that, that rust color thorax. You know, rust thorax is always nice. Again, it matches the bead beautifully with that uh, magic brown bead. Snip off your excess there. And just taper it a little bit towards the bead. And then take a few whip finishes to finish that off. And then cut off your excess. Now, if you've got, again, as I mentioned before in a few videos, if you've got extra, extra thread there, just give it a little wick, just burn it off. And make sure you hold this material before you cut it, because if you don't, it might, you might burn your gills. Now, we're going to pull our gills back, cut them to length. And about, uh, you know, the length of the bead, the width of the bead is perfect for your gills. Now, pretty well completes the fly. Now all we're going to do is coat it. Again, UV coating. I prefer the Loctite. Some people like uh, uh, other materials, but any UV coating, anything that's a, a nice cement works really well. So just smear that on there and get it all over the fly. You know, all around the head. You know, if I could rotate, if it wouldn't go out of focus, I'd rotate the fly to, to get it all over the fly. And put that on there. That'll be a real nice finish for the fly. So there it is, Dawn's Bronze Bomber Chronomid. As you saw, I tied it on a size 14 2X long. That's about as big as I go. You know, I'll go to a size 12 sometimes, but a 14 is really good. And again, vary the colors. That bronze tint with a magic brown bead is the best color combination for chronomid you're going to find. Oh, look at oh, the Oh, nice fish. That's gorgeous fish. Yep. Look at the colors on that. Oh. That's a nice panasque. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, hold, oh, hold. Oh. I'm trying to get you. Fly out. Just wait. Right in the top lip. Well, oh, man. Come on. There. Flies out. Big bomber. Oh, that's a... This is a chunky guy. All right, I'm on the fish. Yeah. Look at how fat he is. There's a green fish. Oh, that. yeah. Gorgeous fish. Gorgeous. Yeah. There he goes. Boy, we're into him now, Bri. You know, maybe um, maybe some bigger fish are <laughs> moving in. Yeah. We've had to move a lot, but we we found some here. Well, we and found that guy. It was no love tap, it went. Yeah, I think when they're eating these big bombers, they hammer them. You yeah, know, the you little just, guys are tapping, love tapping, but the big guys are eating them. Well, that's another nice fish, Brian, that looks good. Yeah, you just got, You got to have rod holders if you're not going to hold that rod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that's why the rod holders, critical. Just nice and fat. Oh, get in the net. Nice and fat. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Nice fish, Bri. There we go. Corner lip. Nice. All right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Oh. Just, yes, just very, very chrome and yeah. well conditioned fish. Oh, yeah, very nice. In great shape. Okay. We're on to them now. See if we can get another one. Yes. And bigger. Double that now. <laughs> Double.
Well, an excellent day deep lining, <laughs> Janner. We always love to do it every year. Yeah, you know, so much fun, especially out here. You know, we get the opportunity to fish the Douglas Lake Ranch on Stony Lake, and we've always had good fishing here. We have not had the best weather this <laughs> no. spring, but it's always been good. Yes. And you know, one thing you got to try, deep line chronometing. A lot of people don't do it. They like bobber fishing. I mean, we're bobber guys. Yeah, we, we love, love it. it. Yeah. But you got to try deep lining because it is yeah. so much fun. And we got to thank uh, Douglas Lake Ranch. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it allowed us access to Stony for the day. And yeah. uh, Stony Lake Lodge is still uh, available for rent as a whole unit. And you bring your own chef and fill the rooms and have a great week of fishing. I know, it's unreal. It's like eight or 10 rooms. You can fill them up with your guests, bring your own chef, have a blast. Oh yeah. I think we're gonna do that in the future. <laughs> you bet. Well, when you come out here, take care, conserve our waters, and we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly.